Hi everyone, my name is Raphael. I'm the CEO here at Sendog Labs. We are a team of ex-founders and ex-VCs that help startups generate demand and unlock growth opportunities. We do that because we know that startups in most cases fail because they can't grow fast enough. That's a really, really big challenge. Now, today we are going to cover our coaching framework for startup leaders, whether they are executives or the founders themselves. Now, coaching can be a very effective tool in your toolbox as a consultancy, but also just internally at any given startup where you could be coaching between founders and up and down the hierarchy um, in order to you know, help prioritize what the team is supposed to focus on in order to identify unknown unknowns and in order to, at the very basic level, help you as you go through this really challenging experience of building startups and products, we know how hard it is to do and it's a, it takes a really big hit on your mental health if it's not going as well as you would like it to and that's probably 75% of the time at least in a startup. So that's where coaching can come in helpful and our clients have tended as we coach them to enjoy the experience. Now I'm going to switch over to my shared screen in just a moment before we go there, if you do like the content that we publish, make sure to subscribe to our channel, drop a comment below. We would really appreciate that. Like the, obviously like the video. And, and if you have questions, we would love to hear from you via email or reach out to us via social. You know, it is really important for us to stay in touch with the ecosystem, understand where their heads are at. So please, please do not hesitate uh, reaching out to us. So without further ado, I'm going to switch over to my shared screen now and readjust my microphone here so that I can look at the screen and run you through it. But you're already seeing our coaching framework here. And the way the slide breaks down and the way the framework breaks down is in, in four sections. There is a preparation step. There is a primary agenda for your calls. There is a secondary agenda for your calls. And then there is a debrief that needs to happen. In the preparation phase, what we like to do with the founders and executives of startups that we work with is send them the questions that we plan to ask in the primary agenda and ask them a day before or even just an hour before to start answering these. Because if they come prepared, if they have collected their thoughts, and if you, especially if they submitted the day before, if you as, a, as, as the coach have had time to look at their answers, you can get to what the meaty part of the discussion is faster. So we have found that to be very helpful. We have found executives and, and startup founders to appreciate it because some of the topics that we suggest we discuss in this in these coaching sessions are, are mentally intensive and giving them some time to think about can be very impactful. Now, aside from preparation, you obviously as the, as the coach also want to sit down before your coaching call for about half an hour at least to go through your notes from previous coaching sessions, to go through the notes that you've gotten here and get ready for the call so that you can justice, do justice to, to the time that the founder is assigned to you because their time is really rare and you have to respect it. The primary agenda are six questions. And the primary agenda here is focused from our perspective in, in this framework, mostly on helping founders prioritize their work because we find that many founders have a ton of or executives have a ton of ideas and, and conflicting priorities and have a hard time prioritizing the things that really matter. So that's what the focus is of this. You may have to adjust it your, to your specific context, the challenges that you typically are facing, though I'm thinking that prioritization is, is usually the most tricky one. And then within the prioritization exercise, maybe you are having an upcoming call with your board that is particularly challenging where you can help the, the, the coach and, and, and counsel and advise the founder um, on what to do, maybe there is a sales discussion where they need tactical advice from you that you can help with. Uh, so usually this primary agenda helps you uncover these areas of need. And so the first question that we ask is very basic. How are you feeling? Uh, on a scale from one to 10, tell us. 10 is high, one is low. Um, this helps us get a sense of, uh, for instance, where their mental health is at. Uh, how, how energized are they? How driven are they? Where is their motivation? Um, how, how just do they feel? Uh, it also gets them talking about something that's pretty easy and some kind of fun to talk about. And most most fundamentally, it gives you a measure that you can track from week to week. So 
after let's say five to six weeks, you can say, hey, on average, you're feeling only a five or on average, you feel 10. Are you really honest here? Or what is going on if it's just a five? So we found this um, tracking tracking um, uh, this, this this quantitative metric to be helpful. Then second, I think asking what would you like to discuss is something that shouldn't be underestimated. You are not in the skin of the founder. You are, unless you are, you know, going with them in a more intense way. In our case, we are coming in to do coaching sessions every every week or every other week. Uh, we don't know what, what are the topics they have in their mind. And so asking them what, what they want to discuss is, is really important here. So we don't have, we are not assuming that we know what they should talk about. Uh, and they usually appreciate also the side comment here, they usually appreciate the focus on them rather than the coaching session, rather than the coach. Uh, number three is what have you accomplished last week? Uh, this is the, the lead for both the positives and the negatives. You need to be looking at the positives as in any feedback sessions. You want to not only be negative, but, you know, empath empathize and, 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 you know, highlight the things that went well. Uh, so that, that, that helps with it. And then number four is where it gets critical and important. Sort of how does that index against your priorities? What slipped and why? In the coaching sessions that we had is that typically we, after these coaching sessions, we will define a set of priorities that the, the founder commits or the executive commits to working on. But then the next time we talk to them, many of these haven't been worked on. And one, we want to raise awareness for this issue. And two, we want to understand whether any critical tasks were missed and what the justification is for that. Um, so these are two important priorities that this question helps unveil. Number five is um, what do you plan to do next week um, and what can you delegate? This is really not a really, really interesting question because I mentioned it, we, we focus this framework on prioritization and one of the most effective management tools that we found is a very simple one. Once you define your strategy as a company, once you have your quarterly objectives and key results as a company, your OKRs, um, the way you make, you translate the OKRs into action is by defining what we call until next week's, um, which shouldn't be more than five items. And that's what we're trying to define here in number, step number five, where we're saying, what are your until next week's until next week, um, because once we have those on paper, um, we, we, we can track them, right? And then question number three and four are based on these questions from last week or the answer on these questions for this question from last week. And then what can you delegate? Many founders, especially as they're scaling from a pre-seed, a seed, a series A to a series B and C company, they, you know, they, they're running into growing pains and the source of these growing pains is most or many times it's them because they don't like to delegate. They have been hands-on. Uh, they have been contributing to many things in a very proactive way. And now giving up control, giving up ownership is really tricky. They're founders for a reason, right? They'd like to be at the front lines, but they have to learn that they have to give up tasks um, because ultimately, otherwise, you know, first of all, they can't do everything and they will be the bottleneck in the company. Um, but also if you don't delegate enough, if you are too in the details, it's not interesting for your direct reports. They feel they will feel controlled. They may feel that they're not getting the interesting work um, assigned to them because you keep all the interesting stuff and the high priority things. Um, so delegation is an important one. And many times, you know, founders also have a high sense of responsibility. So they just feel like they can deliver more than their employees um, and, and think they have unlimited resources, which then kind of connects with question number one is how do you feel, right? If you're kind of going toward a burnout, delegation is really important. And then question number six, um, what was the most useful thing you learned today? That's, um, that's almost like a quality check for you and, and helps the person that you're speaking to start digesting the information that you discussed today. So, um, if you consistently hear that there was nothing interesting that um, was discovered today, you, you need to reconsider the framework, the approach that you're taking uh, and the emphasis that you're setting in any individual coaching session. You could potentially expand this question by saying, hey, what's the most useful and the most useless thing uh, you learned today? Just because it's fun to break it up a little bit. You don't have to be stiff in these discussions. Uh, you are a sparring partner and someone that's in the trenches with the founder and the executives rather than, uh, uh, you know, uh, like a very dated advisor type of model. And then the secondary agenda, as you have gone through the primary agenda, typically the primary agenda will be more than enough to cover at least an hour, more likely an hour and a half to two hours, which is the cap that you should set for any coaching sessions because that's when mental energy starts to run out. Uh, the secondary agenda are two additional questions and then one more suggestion. 
The two additional questions are first, what have you learned uh, from your wins and fuck ups last week? Uh, you know, going through that learning process and encouraging the founder or executive to, to do that proactively is important. It could be part of the primary agenda. You could be swapping out some of these questions. We think it's a really interesting question, but um, from a prioritization perspective, we found the one that we included to be more, more effective. And then taking a step back, uh, that's the next question, taking a step back, do you feel you are on the, on the right track? What, what challenges are you facing and how are you planning to overcome those? You know, on a week by week basis, you, you're trying to set priorities. Um, you are in the details, but sometimes just taking a step back and recognizing recurring issues, patterns um, that would go missed otherwise can help. And that question is designed to address that. And then our recommendation or suggestion here is that when you discuss certain topics um, and let's say uh, even before week by week prioritization of work, there is a question around, hey, how should I design my organizational chart? Who should I assign what topics to and how do I manage performance? How do I set up object objectives? That's where having, for instance, a session on, on OKRs, on objectives and key results as a management tool can be helpful. And you as the, if you are an external counsel, if you are an external coach, or if you are a peer that's coaching another peer, can be helpful to do the research on a tool like that and discuss it with the person that you're coaching. Another example could be things like the bullseye framework on which we also have a video or the buyer journey if you're talking about sales related um, questions um, on which we also have a video. These are all effective tools for um, for uh, being discussed in these sessions if you if if you have enough time. Sometimes maybe then it's the case that you want to replace a coaching session with an educational session. Um, and, and we have done that in our sessions because sometimes, you know, founders, they may have started building a business without too much previous experience. Maybe this is the first time it's kind of just working, uh, but they're missing certain critical skills and that's where you also come in and you shouldn't underestimate your role as a teacher here. And then after the call, I highly encourage you as a coach primarily to do a thorough debrief of what you have discussed. Obviously you will need to take notes during the call. It's a, it's very intensive for you as well. Um, take notes of, of the call, uh, identify key takeaways, identify uh, the next until next week, i.e. the priorities that, that uh, the founder or executive needs to work on and some bigger picture points and send that to, um, uh, to, to, to the person that you're working with. It shows them that you are doing your homework and that you are part of this process and you're taking your role seriously. And it also gives you something for next week to, um, to, to review you know, in order to get ready for your next coaching session or whatever, whenever it is, maybe even it's a month from now, uh, that's where these notes become very important. So that's the last step. And, and going through this process on a weekly basis, I think takes about three hours, half an hour at least for preparation, uh, one and a half hours to, to discuss, um, can be two hours, can also sometimes just be one hour, and then at least 30 minutes, but typically more 45 minutes to an hour for your own debrief, writing everything down in detail, going really deep, whether you have covered important topics, where your biases are and what you can improve as a coach is a critical step you should underestimate. And so you have to have enough time um, for that as well. And it's important to communicate that to your customer if you're an external coach, that it's not just the one and a half hours of the actual coaching session. There is something that comes before and after. So that's our coaching framework. I hope whatever your role is, whether you're external, internal, uh, this is designed to help someone do something that's really, really tricky, take your role seriously. This is awesome. Being part of a startup journey is lovely. Uh, and we wish you much, 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 much success using this framework to design your own framework or just applying this framework in your next coaching session. And let us know how it goes. Drop us a comment, drop us a like, drop us an email, whatever it is. Uh, we look forward to hearing from you and have a great day. Talk soon. Bye-bye.